I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, this morning concludes our four-part summer sermon series, Everyday Disciple, Being Like Jesus in Everyday Life. For the last few Sundays, we've talked about what the life of discipleship looks like. We've said that it's a life that's focused on others, not merely on self. It's a life that is changed and committed, a heart and will that is surrendered, a new direction and worldview with the laws and precepts of our Savior and his character for living as our daily example. We said that discipleship doesn't happen in isolation. It requires relationship. After all, we don't call ourselves, but we are called to call others. And in order to be effective both in making disciples and being disciples, we have some important things that we should be doing every day, and those things are praying and getting into our word and applying the word of God every day. We talked about hospitality, that this call to follow Jesus in call, uh, includes this act of love and service. It means that we open up not only our homes, but our lives and our hearts to others beyond our inner circles. And last week, we talked about technology and social media and how we have to be mindful of the ways that we use these tools. We have to be mindful of our motivation in using them, understanding that our neighbors, those who we seek to make disciples, are affected by how we use them, and that the content that we both create and consume should be loving and nurturing and uplifting and not negative and hurtful and demeaning. And so today I want us to turn to those around us, our neighbors. How well do we know our neighbors, both within our local church community and our own individual communities where we live? Now, how many of us remember the classic PBS program, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood? Right? I watched it as a kid growing up. And you know, he had that classic song, It's a Beautiful Day, in this neighborhood, right? A beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? And there's a line that I discovered says, neighbors are people who are close to us and friends are people who are close to our hearts. I like to think of you as my neighbor and my friend. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Well, if, as the song says, neighbors are the people who are close to us, how well do we know our neighbors? Do we know their first and last names? Do we know their children, their names, how old they are, where schools they go to? Do we know what our neighbors do for a living? What their favorite sports are, sports teams, or do we not really know our neighbors? Now, if by chance you fall in the category of those who do not know their neighbors or know them very well, don't be afraid, don't be alarmed, because you fit in with the majority of Americans. According to Pew Research, only 31% of Americans say that they know all or most of their neighbors. Only 31%. And on a separate poll that was conducted back in 2019, it was discovered that two out of three millennials, that's the generation born between 1981 and 1996, two out of three millennials feel disconnected from their community. With 43% feeling more attached to a particular online community than an offline one. So meaning 
43% of the millennials feel more connected on a Facebook or a chat group than they do with an in-person, face-to-face network. So how can we disciple our neighborhood if we don't know our neighbors or we feel disconnected from our neighborhood? When his sermon on the Mount, as recorded in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, verses 13 through 16, Jesus said to his disciples, you are the salt of the earth. But what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Salt and light. As believers in Christ, we are comparable to salt and light. What does salt do? Salt is a preservative. It absorbs excess moisture from meat and poultry dehydrating them, um, preventing them from spoiling, right? So there's preservation. Salt also enhances the flavor of food, right? If something tastes bland, what do you do? Add some salt to it. Uh, I have to crack up in the office when we get some fast food and the fries don't have enough salt. Sean and I are looking for the salt shaker. (laughs) We add some salt. Well, if you think of flavor as the quality of life, then as the salt of the earth, you and I should be doing everything that we can to both enhance the quality of life, as well as preserving and lengthening the lives of those around us, our neighbors. When we look at our neighborhoods, what are the needs and the concerns that could benefit from some of our salt? See, nothing happens, nothing changes if we're not active, if we're not involved. Think of it like this. You have salt in a salt shaker next to a steak. The salt by itself just in the salt shaker is not going to make any difference to the steak unless you pick it up and pour it on it and rub it into the meat. And it's embedded into it. Is our church embedded in this community? Are we embedded in the neighborhoods in which we live? Jesus said to his disciples, you are the light of the world, like a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. Like salt, light has a purpose. It can have a dramatic effect on everything it touches. Light, we know, makes it possible to see. If the power goes out, what do we do? We reach for a flashlight or a candle, so we don't want to bump into anything and hurt ourselves. When we're driving at night, we're aided by the headlights on our cars so that we we can see where we're going. Light illuminates. We are to be the light that illuminates our neighborhoods because our job is to touch the lives of everyone around us. Right? Discipleship includes relationship. And our light isn't necessarily limited to our words, but it's also the witness of our deeds, right? our good works. Jesus said, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father who is in heaven. I read an article about a woman who had been laid off from her job at a university. And she didn't look for another job. She said, you know what, I want to be of service to my community. So she took what what she had, and she spent her time ministering to those living on the margins. She did everything from mentoring youth, working with food pantries and food drives. And there was a local trailer park in her area. 
and she took time to help out some of those low-income residents who lived there. And many of those residents were in different parts of transition in their lives. Some were in between jobs, some were battling addictions, some were leaving abusive relationships, but they were in, in transition. And she said that every person that she met at the trailer park was truly determined to be independent and successful, but they were struggling. And most of them really couldn't, couldn't be independent and successful. And so she felt God calling her to a new mission, to be a neighbor to these friends at the park. And so she decided to move into the trailer park and become a missionary. And while she was there, she met one of her neighbors, a single father of two, and he had Parkinson's, and he needed help getting in and out of his home. And so she mobilized a group to help get a ramp built to provide access for him. And in talking with him and getting to know him better, she learned that mobility wasn't his only need. He also needed help obtaining child support and getting other means of transportation and employment and help with his two children. And so with her help and a, another, a, lo a local group of missionaries of like-mindedness, they were able to help this father meet his needs. And he got better, he got up on his feet and was able to relocate and move out of the trailer park. But it was through a growing and trusting relationship with her neighbors that this woman became the salt and light to her neighborhood. Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. You, you and I are salt and light. That's what it means to be a disciple. We are salt and we are light. We are enhancements. We illuminate. If we're not enhancing or illuminating, then we're flavorless. We're not living and walking in our purpose. If we're called to call others to Christ and we don't know our neighbors, we don't know their needs, what are we doing? Then we're not living in our purpose. We're not, we're not here just to serve ourselves. Right? We're blessed to be a blessing to someone else. And that means our neighbors. If we're not doing that, we're not making a difference. So we've spent these last few weeks talking about discipleship and living every day as a disciple of Christ. So I charge you this week to spend some time thinking of some of the ways that you can get to know your neighbors, both in your local settings and right here on Peyton Road Southwest. What's one thing that we can all do differently this week, right? One thing that we can do to build relationship with our neighbors. Maybe we invite them to service. Tell them to click and log on and subscribe to our YouTube channel or come and sit in the pew. Invite them to a social event. Jazz Under the Stars is coming up. Back to School um, Sunday is coming up. Or other social events. Share a meal. We talked about Jesus being found at our own dinner tables. And of course, there's modern technology. Maybe start a neighborhood chat group in your local area. But there's always something that we can be doing, big or small, to build relationships, to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Because every day that God wakes us up is an opportunity to enhance someone's life, to add a, a little flavor, a little salt. Every day that God wakes us up is an opportunity to be someone's light in the darkness. And like Mr. Rogers said, every day is a beautiful day to be a neighbor. Amen. <laughs>